Hey, Steve here. Let's make some mad twinkly riffs. <laughs> Alright, alright. So all joking aside, what do I mean by mad twinkly riffs? Uh, I mean something like this. Yeah, just little like, you know, big brash chords and then little fills in between. So we're going to look at, uh, at ways that I write that kind of stuff in this tutorial. Alright, so let's get into it. So the first thing I'll do is choose a particular open or alternative tuning, uh, whatever's really taking my fancy at the time. Within the like mathy, emo, kind of post-rock vibe, there's plenty of tunings out there to get that kind of really characteristic, bright sounding, twinkly, open tuning, alternative tuning that we're going for. Uh, so in this case, for this uh, video, I've chosen the tuning of F-A-C-G-B-E, and I took this one from uh, the Yvette Young uh, tuning. Uh, this one's a nice, bro bright, open sounding tuning, and it sounds like this. It has that kind of mystic mysticism to it too, that kind of slight tension to it as well. So, big fan of that. So the second thing I'll do is head over to the Guitar Tuning Database website. I'll punch in my tuning and this generates chords and scales for you uh, in a particular key. So you also need to choose a key here. Uh, so for this tutorial I've chosen the key of C major. And um, here is the chart that I got and here are all the notes that I could possibly use in C major across the fretboard. So this is great for a visual representation of... Um, and. Uh, a quick reference of where the notes are across the fretboard, right? So that's fantastic. So the next thing I like to do is build some big sounding like uh, twinkly chords and then I'll take those chords and make some kind of riffs from them. Um, so to build the chords I choose the notes from uh, the, a particular key. So in this case we have C major and I recommend if you want it to sound quite popular uh, then I recommend building chords from the first, second, fourth, fifth and sixth notes of that scale, um, this, the major scale that you're using and this is what you're hearing a lot of popular music and it can make things sound quite catchy so that's always great. So to build my harmony I chose some root notes so I went with, uh, I wanted a minor feel so I went with E, D and A as my root notes for the harmony. Uh, so then I consulted my lovely um, uh, notes chart here and I looked at where I could possibly start to build these root notes from. So I went with E, E, D and A like that. So now I've got my root notes for the harmony, it's time to build some extended chords baby. So here again, we can help use the chord charts to help guide us here, so we're not playing any bum notes. So what I did was just mess around, so I had my E. So I just started to put my fingers on the fretboard using the uh, chord chart, uh, the, the notes chart, sorry, to guide me. So. Oh, that sounds alright, right? I like that. That one sounds too, that sounds good too, right? that one as well. So maybe I was happy with that one. And then I moved over to my A. And uh, sounds a bit too majory, right? Not really minor. Mm. Um, uh, a bit suspended, I don't like that. Um, a bit uh, dominant sounding in a way. Oh, well that sounds better, right? Lastly, we had the A. Oh, very tense. Which I like that, so. So that was the chord pattern I came up with there. So it's good to know your theory, but it's also good to let your ear and have a go yourself trying to find the notes, not be too rigid with using music theory. 
uh, so that's how I came about making those chords. And later on you can work out what actually extended chords they are, and um, that's how you get this you know, really like big bright sounding chords, right, when you're doubling up notes, like in that, in that first chord there, having two Bs, for example. It's much easier to finger right than in standard tuning as well. So that, that's one uh, good use of open tunings as well. So now I have these chords. So there's something in that already, right? We can hear that. Uh, so the next transition. Let me just turn my page to get to my notes. Um, is changing these chords into some kind of riffs. So how I'll do this, let's take the E minor chord here. Uh, what I'll do is I'll look for the chord tones um, because these are the most prominent notes that are in the chord and they also sound the most uh, pleasing to the ear and they're quite safe to use. So I'll use this as a, a skeleton and I'll add the extra notes in to add color to the riff. So. In E minor, we have um, so the one, three, and the fifth. So the one, three, five are the chord tones there. So we have E, G, and B. So what I did, I consulted my chart and I found where I could play E, B, and G on the on the neck. So I had the B here, the E here, the G here. So now I know. If I construct a riff and I hit these notes within the riff, that's going to sound quite nice. And then I can add the extra notes in to add color to the riff. So that's what I did. play around um, it took me a good you know 10 15 minutes to come up with that you know there was a, a lot going into the process there so you know don't be put off that and then um, also that brings us into the territory of technique I didn't mention that sorry uh, for open tunings I recommend finger picking <laughs> Um, if you get very dexterous with that, it can access a lot more um, techniques and makes things uh, a little easier to play as well. And um, uh, open strings are your best friend, and legato is also your best friend as well. So what I mean by that is stuff like this. So I've got a lot of... Minimal effort, but it sounds like I'm playing very fast, right? Uh, yes, yeah, so open strings, hammer on and pull offs, slides, all those kind of things. And remember the key ingredient uh, tapping, of course. And yes, yeah, so I did that for my first riff. And then this is the A, same thing again. Found those key notes, uh, the chord tones that I wanted to use. like that we can do. And lastly over to the A. So again there we had the, the, the chord tones I was looking for. Yeah, so there, uh, after spending a bit of time noodling around, I came up with some mad twinkly riffs. Uh, so let's play the all three chords, three ideas together. So there we have it, a mad twinkly riff idea from scratch. Um, I've shown you how it's important to know both your theory, but also not to get bogged down too much of letting theory guide you and uh, have a bit of spontaneity in there as well. Um, yeah, it's quite a difficult subject, but take your time. And if you're not getting anywhere at first, you know, just be patient and keep working at these things slowly. You know, spending a little time every single night definitely helps. Um, 
If you have any questions, then please leave them in the comments. And I will see you next time. Thank you for watching. Bye bye.